Hey there guys, gals, fans, and pals, John Megacycle here on episode of Creeper World 3 Arc Eternal. And if you have not heard of the Creeper World series, this is one that I definitely recommend. Um, how would I explain this as like a genre? I guess like turret defense, tower defense, kind of sort of a thing, action-y, sci-fi? I guess if I had to chuck it all into one, maybe, maybe management slightly as well, but definitely like tower defense-ish is how I'd explain this one out. Um, usually with like a new series, when I play games and I show them off, I kind of go through the story and I'm like, yeah, let's just be immersive and stuff. To be absolutely honest, I've started and stopped this game about maybe half a dozen to a dozen times because I just didn't have the time to play it throughout. I've got the time now and I want to play it, but I, I don't care about the story. Um, I will tell you a little bit about the premise of the game though. Um, if memory serves, and I've beaten Creeper World 1 and 2. Um, if memory serves, the way this works is mankind created some sort of a gray goo kind of a self-replicating weapon of sorts. Or some, some sort of material. Um, if you're not familiar with gray goo, um, imagine like nanomachines that can contort and conform and be, I guess, like everywhere by absorbing resources that are just around and just being able to prevent itself from destruction, being able to be smart enough to navigate hazards and and kind of just like, a, think of like just a self-replicating machine, if I had to just very plainly say like what Grey Goo is. And that's kind of what we're fighting here. We're fighting Creeper. Creeper is this sort of an element substance that got wildly out of control and just started eating everything. Now, in Creeper World 3, we're trying to piece together what happened. And, like I said, um, I normally take the time and we go through the whole story, but I just, I want to get to the meat and potatoes of this game so darn bad that I just don't have the patience. So, being completely honest about that. Now, the weird thing about this is, for whatever reason, my mouse is offset. I totally get it. I've tried three recording programs, I've tried a bunch of stuff, I cannot get the mouse to work. So, I don't know if you're seeing it, how you're seeing it on the recording. That worked, that didn't work at all. Okay, I was really hoping that would realign. Um, let me just check options here. I've been trying for all goodness gracious to get this to work, and I cannot get it to work for the life of me. Um, hotkeys, 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 I don't care. Yeah, now this probably looks insane that the whole thing is off to the side. Um, yeah, I don't see anything for mouse control. So I'm going to apologize straight up. Um, I can't get that figured out for life of me. I'm not smart enough. But, anywho, um, I do want to go ahead and get started. So, Arc Eternal. Uh, this already has a save in here. It was literally four seconds. I just wanted to make sure the recording bit actually worked. So there's that. Um, but we're going to just restart world. Uh, now, like I said, normally I'd like to go through all the tutorial stuff um, that the game provides. But I'm just going to provide the tutorial for you. So we'll make this pretty quick. Like I said, really want to get to the meat and potatoes. Um, so this is the map. This is a spawner. This spawner kicks out creeper every so often. Every so much, every so often. Um, this object here is called a gate key or a shield key. This is what I need to advance the next stage. Okay, so this is going to crank out tons of liquidy creeper nonsense. Um, the structures that we have to care about is, first of all, the command center. Uh, this command center is what allows us to expand and build other structures. Um, since this is the first level, they kind of want us to have the glove, uh, the kid gloves on. So they're, you know, like these higher areas are where they want us to bunker. And oh, speaking of higher areas... Um, I, I would point with the mouse, but it's hard to tell. So, like, right here on the toolbar, you can see there's a little height meter. It changes as I move the mouse around. It better reflects what kind of a height we have in what area. Now, this fluid, or this creeper, acts... Well, I guess I just said it. This creeper acts like a fluid. So, if you see that there are lower areas, like here... I don't know if you can see on the bar below, but it just says 1. So, it's a height of 1. And as we move up and up and up, the height gets higher and higher and higher. So this thing has pretty solid, like, 
fluid physics, liquid physics, whatever you want to say, is it'll build up as it's flooding an area. Um, aside from that, we have our command center, like I said. We have a cannon, which is the primary defensive structure against creeper. You can actually shoot creeper and kill it. Um, we have the nullifier, which is supposed to be built here on the creeper spawner. Um, I can't build it anywhere else. Um, I could also build it... Nope, I guess I gotta kill the creeper spawner. Oh, that's right. Um, the shield key just needs to be connected to the network. Right, right, right. You can tell it's been a while since I played. Um, aside from that, we also have collectors, and these are energy collectors. These are what actually produce energy for us to build, create ammunition, power special weapons. Energy as an economic idea is critical. So that's really all we're going to deal with for this level. We have our command center. We've got our collectors. We've got our cannon and our nullifier. So I'm just going to get right to it. Um, like I said, usually they'd want us to park in the corner. Um, I'm going to be gutsy this go around though. So I'm just going to thunk. And the game is still paused. So I'm going to go ahead and resume. And now you can see exactly what the creeper is up to. And I'm going to pause now that the command center is down and online. Uh, the command center is what's responsible for taking the energy and using it. And by using it, like I said, it could be construction. It could be creating ammo or weapons or specials or whatever. Um, as I'm placing the collectors, you can see a little white line being passed through in these green lines as well. This shows where they're connected and how they'll transfer energy in between the entire network. So I don't... Oh, that was bad. So I don't want to put these too close because... No, just destroy it. Um, they can only... only uh, how do I want to say this? It's kind of like a solar collector, but every see all that white area around the collector? That's what the energy grid is going to collect. So now I've got a pretty resilient energy network here. I'm just going to build a few more. Perfect. And let's resume. Now I should move kind of quick to get this creeper under wraps. So let's go ahead and weapons. Cannon, cannon. If you can see above the command center up here, you can see how much power we're bringing in, how much we have in storage. I know the mouse is janky janky, but look at the thing I've selected, not the mouse itself. <laughs> Gosh, that's going to be frustrating and I do apologize. Um, so as you'll see, with the height, this creep will flow out to here first before it gets to the next area. Like I said, very fluid-like physics. I'm just going to keep building a few more structures and collectors. Continuously expanding out my economy, very important. There we go. Now the turrets are getting red pellets, as you can see, red energy, which is ammunition. White pellets that are moving around our network are construction energies, or construction, I call them pellets, because that's what they visually look like to me, but it's it's energy packets, or, or structure creation packets are the white ones. So as we keep going, I'm just gonna continuously expand up my economy. Okay, and we get more notifications in the tutorial. It just says keep expanding your network, keep defeating the creeper. Um, what we want to get to is we want to get to a nullifier next to the spawner, which will kill the spawner. Um, the lore between the nullifier uh, in earlier games was it was literally a rift generator that would chuck the spawner into a completely different dimension. It would just banish it out of this dimension of space and time to give us hope. So now you can see on the command center, can I zoom in pretty nice? Oh, I can move it. I keep forgetting I can do that. Let's not do that. Uh, I can't zoom in anymore. But there's a bar, the energy bar at the top is now getting full. We've got enough collectors and they're bringing in all the resources we need to fuel our combat. So this is going to build the nullifier. When it's complete, it's going to charge up with ammunition energy and then it's gonna banish the creeper out of existence. Oh, that's right, you can also move your cannons. So let's just move you up. And because that'll break the chain, let's build a new chain. You have to be super, super careful when you're moving stuff. Because if, like I just demonstrated here, I broke that chain there. That shut down this turret because it wasn't getting any weapon energy. And we can move up even further for feeling really ambitious, which I am. Again, we have to be super careful how much we move at any given time. And 
I don't want to get too close. We can lose our turrets if they take damage. Yep, and look at that. We're clearing out the creeper real nice. Nullifier is online. It needs now 50 ammo. And now we can see that all in these red energy packets. It'll charge up. It'll take a few moments to power up its weaponry. And then it'll just blast it out of existence. Yep, you can hear it. Dunzo. All right. Now, the cool thing about this is it leaves a bit of a, I don't know what you'd call that, a halo. This is the normal range of my turrets. You see the white box around the turret? If I put it over this halo, it greatly increases its size. Yeah, now you can see how much more potent the turret is. But enough with the jibba jabba. Let's hook this up to the network. And once it's hooked up to the network, we'll be able to assimilate the shield key and we'll be able to proceed on to the next world. There we go, done. We have the Car Care Cassera, Carcera Shield Key. Uh, claim victory, very good. And then we've got a little bit of a submit score thing. Now that we have the Shield Key, the shield's deactivated around this planet, we can proceed with the storyline. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip, thank you, and pause. So now we have two spawners. We have this spawner here, we have a spawner here. And again, by hovering over it, you can see an interval and an amount that tells you how much creep is going to get blasted into the planet. Um, I believe we got our new structure. No, we have not. What we do have, though, is this, and this is a tech relay. Oh, actually, no. It's just a tech facility which gives us the technology of relay. Excellent. We will be needing that. Uh, I'll explain it when we have it, but let's go ahead and get set up. To grab these little tech packets, you just gotta hook it into the network. And I'm just gonna get a bunch of network queued up so we have some energy. Cool, so that gives me the relay. Let me pause a second, let me show you what the relay does. If you can notice, the line in between a new collector and a current collector is very short. Like, there's not really a ton of exploration and expansion I could do without being a real pain in the butt. A relay gets around that. A relay, look at that, almost double. A, a relay really makes it easier to expand. So one of the things I'm going to do here is I really want to get these turrets locked in over on this bottom right side. So by using some relay action, I can really get some stuff going on here. So let's just weapon it up. And that'll give me some amount of containment, which is good. Let's get a collector there to distribute proper. And let's get a turret here, and a turret here, and a turret here, and some relays. And if I didn't mention this before, this isn't costing me anything. All I'm really doing right now is just setting down blueprints. That's all that's really happening, is I'm blueprinting stuff I want built. Um, stuff doesn't get built until the, the network builds out. So for example, this relay right here... This is what's controlling everything. Until this gets built, this can't get built. And then this can't get built. And then this can't... So blah, 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 blah. So it'll build as quickly as it can. So I'm not really in any danger or any real rush with this. So I could just keep blueprinting over and over and over and over again until my heart's content. Uh, I'm just going to bunker this in a bit more. And let's get down a nullifier somewhere. Great. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and build up a bit more of our solar network. Um, I think it was solars in a different game. I don't know why I have solars in my head, but the real word for these structures are collectors. Okay, I think everything is pretty darn connected. I always like to add maybe two or three points of fault tolerance. So right here we had one weak link, now that's connected. I might do another relay run up here, but I kind of want stuff to build out. So we're just going to let this sit a little bit, get our power upgraded and all that and all that.
It's just nice to watch. It's going to build out itself pretty well. We already did a lot of the planning. So there's no real rush. And you can tell based on the height, we're not in any real danger up here. What I could do, though, since we have a surplus of power, is start adding a little bit of insurance. Get a few turrets up here. So if all heck breaks loose, we have a plan B. So there we go. I don't want to ask too much on my power network. Looks good. This game is definitely a delicate balance between how much I want to ask out of the system and how much the system is going to be able to give back. So let's go ahead and build up another relay network. This will also help get some of the energy packets distributed better as opposed to again that one point of failure. And on top of that, I don't know if you're noticing, but the speed at which uh, the packets pass on the relays, oh, excuse me, a bit of a hiccup there, is also faster. And get out of here, tutorial. And now we've got some turrets online. We're going to start working back the creep. Perfect. And that's going to give us plenty of room. That nullifier is going to trigger off. No problem. Let's get another nullifier set up. We've got plenty of energy to go around. And what we'll do is we'll start moving the turrets up here to start working on this. Because the problem is this stuff is going to start flooding out pretty darn fast. So you move up. And you move up. And you can move. I don't really know. There is fine. go. Now the fire is charging up and we have plenty of energy. We built up enough of a backbone that that really pays off. Done deal. That's going to work out the rest of the creep. That leaves the halo again. I'll take advantage of it even though I don't think it's going to do me any good. Um, height is also an issue. If you can see all the red those are all the places I just can't hit because it does, in fact, take height into consideration. Um, this nullifier is going to fire pretty darn quick here, and that should be the end of this level. Done deal. So I hope that gives you a really idea of the game. I kind of want to keep this first episode a little short, just so we can give you an idea. You know, just wanted to touch, uh, touch, well, no, what's a phrase? Put our feet in the water? Put our toes in the water. Holy crap. I'm going to continue without submitting. So we've already finished this sector. We're going to see the sector map. As you can see, the map is, or the game is broken down into different areas. There's different opportunities. You can split off these other zones and sectors. If I close the map and go to menu... Uh, to return to origin. This is the Tormented Space Prospector Zone Alpha Sector Colonial Space. And that's the these. Tormented Space Alpha Sector blah blah blah. So there's a lot to this game. There's a lot of playability, replayability in my opinion. And I believe there's like daily maps and stuff as well. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Um, maybe that was Creeper World 2. But I knew there was like daily, daily challenge maps and stuff. But anywho, um, thanks for joining me. My name is John Megacycle. Quick look into Creeper World 3, and I hope to see you next time.